Welcome to my Fast Track Tube Guitar Amplifier Seminar Training. Today we're going to talk about some fundamentals of tube guitar amps and what goes on inside of these guitar amps and how you can um, alter the sound, voice the amps, troubleshoot the amps, um, and even possibly build your own amp someday if you haven't done that already. Um, with electronics, we're going to be dealing with electricity. And the thing about electricity that's very fundamental is that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. And this, you probably already knew this from playing with magnets when you're a little kid. You see like uh, magnetism, you know, two north poles, they would push against each other and then the north would be attracted to the south. It's the same kind of thing with electricity. The negative uh, charges are attracted to the positive, and then the negatives would, if two negatives would repel from each other, or two positives would repel from each other just the same. Um, also with electricity, you know, electricity is one of those things we can't see it, but we know it's there. It's kind of like gravity. You know, gravity's there, but we, you know, you can't really see it. And electricity, you don't really see it. You see the effects of it. You know it's there. It's invisible, but it acts a lot like water. It acts a lot like water. It uh, has vo the volume of electrons is called amperage. A volume of water is called gallons, let's say. I mean, you know, in the English system, or it could be uh, quartz or whatever, but, you know, there's a volume there. And with electricity, the volume could be measured in amps or milliamps if it was a very small amount. Um, also, with water, you have pressure. Um, with electricity, you have pressure also. It's called voltage. And um, there are certain components that are used in um, electronics, like resistors and capacitors, which we're going to talk about a little bit more uh, at length uh, later. But, you know, we talk about circuits. Well, the word circuit is basically it comes from the same Latin root as circle. So a circle, a circuit is, uh, it's a circle, you know, of electrons flow. And let's say you might have a battery here, and maybe you've got a resistor here, and you know, the electrons are going from the negative to the positive, and it, it's a circuit, or a circle. And um, if you were to break this circle somewhere, anywhere, any connection on there, then the electrons will no longer flow. Just like if you had a hose with water flowing through it and you could cut the hose, well then the water wouldn't flow through the hose anymore. Very simple. Let's look at uh, lesson one here. With respect to electrical charges, opposites attract, which is the same as with magnetism. A positive charge will attract a negative charge. In an electrical circuit, the negative electrons flow towards the positive charge. Think of a battery, it has a negative and a positive side. Conduct, uh, if you connect a conductor from one to the other, electrical current will flow from the negative to the positive. This is called a circuit. Now this is, this is uh, the basic thing to know. And then you've got two different types of electricity. You've got DC, direct current, or AC, alternating current. What's the difference? Direct current, the electrons are flowing in one direction. AC current, the electrons are flowing in both directions. So that's the difference. Now with AC uh, current, we know AC current from our walls. Um, the wall has 120 volts AC here in Texas. Um, or at least it's supposed to have that. Um, DC is not used on the uh, electrical grid to get power to your home. There's a reason why. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, uh, AC, you can use high voltage with transformers and transform it down and it's easier to transmit over long long lines because with the higher voltage, which is higher pressure, you need less current, less gallons. Therefore, it's easier to transport that electricity and 
then when it gets to a local area, they have a transformer to transform it down to a voltage you can use, um, which has nothing to do with guitar amps. I don't even know why we even talked about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, now we want to talk about resistance a little bit and what a resistor actually is. Uh, I've used an example before. If you had a water hose and it had pressure going through it and you put a kink in the hose, that would be a resistance to the flow. And now you wouldn't have as many gallons flowing through and you wouldn't have as much pressure either. Matter of fact, if you could measure the pressure from the source to the side after the kink, you would see that there was a difference in pressure. That difference in pressure uh, in electronics, it happens the same with a resistor in electronics. If you've got a 400, a 400 uh, volt source and it's running through a resistor, and the other side is uh, 300 volts, and you put your voltmeter one, on one side and one on the other, you're going to measure 100 volts, because that's how much voltage dropped across that resistance. Okay, one side had 400 volts, the other side had 300. Where did the other 100 go? It was on the resistor, just like on a water hose. If you had 400 pounds of pressure here, 300 here, and you had a kink in the middle, that kink is eating up 100 pounds of uh, pressure. Okay. So um, this called ER drop in electronics, the E is usually used for voltage. And um, R would be resistance. So an ER drop is a voltage drop across the resistor. And, we're, and that's very important to know that because uh, the basis of your gain on your preamps is, re is related to that, which we'll talk more about that later. And of course, we have the symbol for the resistor here um, because originally, the original resistors were wire wound and uh, so the symbol for it looks a lot like a wire wound resistor. Okay, now I want to talk about the difference between series connected and parallel connected resistors. And um, if you've got a circuit where, let's say you have a battery. This is going to be my symbol for a battery. And you hook it up to two resistors in series. That's called series connection. You could hook it up in there. Another way you could hook it up to resistors is you could hook them up in parallel. Like that. Now, you're going to get a different set of circumstances for each way. If you hook them in series like this, all current flows through both resistors. That's one thing we know about this because as the current leaves it's got to go through this resistor and it keeps on going and goes through this resistor. So that's one thing about series. With parallel, that's not the case. I don't know if I spelt that right. Parallel, two L's there. Uh, with this, all voltage is the same. So in series, all current is the same because you got the same amount of current going through this one that's going through this one. But in parallel, all the voltage is the same. If you've got nine volts here, zero volts here, then this one has nine volts across it. And this one has nine volts across it. The voltage is the same. On this one, the current splits in accordance 
to the resistor values. And on this one, the voltage splits in accordance with the resistor values. Matter of fact, I've got the formula for that, which is just, you know, you add the resistors together for series. So if this was a 10K resistor here, and this was a 20K resistor here, the sum of that would be 30K. That's what this battery said. This battery is acting as if it's going through one 30K resistor. So that's how much resistance is in that circuit. All of the current that goes through this is going to this. For the series, I tell you, all you do is add the resistors, R1 plus R2. If you have more resistors, plus R3, et cetera, equals, and then the resistor total in series. Now, in parallel, on the other hand, you have a different formula. And with the uh, uh, parallel, you multiply these resistors together, and then you divide by the sum of the resistors to get the total resistance. Now let's do this, this ought to be easy to do. If, let's use the same values, let's say one of these is 10K and the other's 20K. Uh, 10 times 20K is 200K, right? 200, 200K. And then uh, R1 plus R2 is 30K. Divide the 30 into the 20. This cancels out, so three into 20 is like probably six something, 6.6K. .6 so now this battery thinks it's operating in the 6.6K because that's what this total resistance looks like to this battery. Now, if you think of water, this way is a, um, this way you're going to have less current flowing than this way. Because this way, you, you, you only see a 6.6K resistance. This way, you see a 30K resistance. So there's a lot more resistance in this battery uh, circuit. So therefore, you're not going to have as much current flowing. Just like if you take a hose and put a bigger kink in it, you're going to have less gallons flowing through it. The bigger the kink, the less the flow. Same thing here. And here, you've got less of a kink because it's only 6.6K. This is going to draw more current. Now on the other hand, uh, on this one, the voltage is going to split between these two resistors unevenly because it splits accordance to the R values. And since there's 30K here, uh, you're going to lose a third of the total resistance here and two thirds of the total, I mean, two thirds of the total current here and a third here. So whatever the total current is, a third of it's going to be here, two thirds of it's there. And together you have three thirds, which is the full amount. Okay, now I've got some homework here. Here's the example if you had uh, different values for these series connected or parallel connected. And to make it easier to read, I'm just going to do this. R1, R2, this is series, and then parallel would be just another way of drawing it. See, one way, all the current goes through both. 
All current that goes through this one has to go through this one. The other way, the current splits two different ways. See? But we're going to look at some possible values. Like you've got uh, for R1, 300, and R2 is 4,000. So 300 and 4,000, so this is going to be 4,300 because it's the sum of the resistances. But if you had 300 here and 4,000 here, then you would multiply the 300 times 4,000, and then that would be divided by 4,300. I know you could cancel this out, and you'd have 12,000 divided by 43, which is going to be approximately 279, I think, or so. Look at the difference, though. Over here, you put these same two resistors in series. You got 4,300 ohms, and over here, you've only got 279. You know, this current's going to this one's going to draw a lot more current, given the same amount of voltage supply. Okay. Simple question. You probably all know this. Why wouldn't all the current go through the lesser value resistor on the parallel circuit instead of passing through both of them? Why wouldn't all of it just go through the lesser value one? Most of it does. It's real lopsided on the, on the current. Like if you had a 300 here and a 4,000 here, you see the current sees that as two, I mean the uh, circuit sees that as 279. 279 is almost 300. I mean, it's only a little bit away. So almost all the current goes this way. And you got a little tiny bit of current trickling through here. Okay. Thank but you're, it's good that you pointed that out because uh, that way you can tell, you know, what's drawing the current. And in a circuit like this, if this was a power circuit, you might want to use a bigger wattage resistor to handle the extra current. Maybe this one would be a one watt and this is a half watt or so. So that's a good point that you brought that up. Okay, someone else. I was just curious, <clears throat> I, it's probably going to be discussed later, but why are we throwing resistors into a circuit? <laughs> why are you putting resistors in the circuit? Yeah, why are we slowing it down and, and increasing the things on the other end of that that only require certain... Okay, you remember earlier we talked about that when you run a current through a resistance that there's a voltage drop across that resistance? There's a lot that you can do with that. We can use that for biasing a tube. We can use it for getting gain off the plate. We can use it to alter um, the uh, uh, tone stack. I mean, there's a lot that you can do with a resistor.